Have you ever played a game and thought to yourself, man, these levels are getting repetitive? Or have you ever created your own game and thought to yourself, man, creating these levels is so time consuming and boring? Um, well, let me tell you, I sure have. And while handcrafted levels allow for a greater depth of attention to detail, there is a better way, and it's called procedural generation. Now I know, procedural generation can get a bad rap because it can sometimes create bland or generic content. So we use the computer mm -hmm. to generate everything that you see. But let me show you what I've made that has allowed me to create some really neat levels for my top-down stylized tanks game. Tanks, but no tanks. But first, let's take it back to where this all started. If you've been following my development on this tanks game, you probably saw how the levels are laid out. They fit entirely on the screen, and I created each level by hand. The only part that was randomized was the order in which you would see each level. And boy, let me tell you, it was tedious as heck to create each level by hand. Getting the placement of each piece just right, tweaking the size of the blocks, enemy placement, and everything, it just took forever. So I thought to myself, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. So, I decided to kick it into high gear. My little tanks have been constrained to stagnant levels for too long. It was time to go open world. Well, not really open world, but you'll see what I mean. Now, the thing with procedural generation is that you need to set some ground rules to constrain it. So, I came up with a very, very, very basic rule set to start off with, and figured I could expand it from there. I wanted to create the world on a grid, which meant I could supply a width and a length, and then I could generate a 2D grid of flat ground. Then I could use some tricky maths to spawn in interesting things on top of it. So, I jumped into Unity, made a tile prefab that was just a little flat square, and then I made a script to spawn them in, and bada bing bada boom. Now we have a bigger square. Wait, did this work? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the smaller squares are in there. Okay, this is great, but how do I spawn things like walls or water or whatever in a way that doesn't look completely random? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm using noise. Nice. And when you think of noise, you're probably picturing the static on your old TV when there was no cable or satellite connection. And that kind of noise is completely random. But what I'm talking about is Perlin noise, or sometimes simplex noise. This is a mathematical formula that creates values from zero to one. Zero is black, one is white, and the shades of gray are in between. But here's the cool part. Each pixel of noise is similar to the pixels around it, so you aren't going to get a value of zero and one that are right next to each other. It gradually changes from one value to another. And you can change the scale of it too, which is useful when procedurally generating content. So let me show you how I use this in my game specifically. First I made another tile prefab called Wall and I added that reference to my script. Now, in Unity, you can just use mathf.perlinnoise to run an x and a y coordinate through the Perlin formula to get back a value between 0 and 1. So now, we can say if our value that gets returned is over 0.5, then spawn a wall. And if it's under 0.5, then we can spawn a normal tile. And that's the basic gist of what I'm doing with my level generator. I can create these tile prefabs, set a threshold for when they should spawn, and bada bing bada boom, Bob's your uncle. So I made some tiles for walls, water, holes, enemy spawners, and stationary turrets. And the really fun part is tuning these values to get maps that are interesting to play on. By changing the scale of the noise and the different tile spawn thresholds, you can get some pretty unique results. But I wanted a little more control over how my maps were made. I wanted to spawn in points of interest, not based on a noise value, but on a quantity value. For instance, maybe I wanted exactly two turrets on the map. So I started to create multiple steps to my map generation process, and I made each step their own button in the editor so it's obvious what's going on. Step one is to destroy the current map. And that's easy enough. Step two is to generate the new tile grid based off of the noise values. Step three is to go through these quantity tiles and replace a few of the existing tiles with these new tiles. Now this is not as simple as a random tile replacement though. I added an option to ensure that the tile placement is on path. And this is an important concept that I'll go over as a part of the next step. Step four is to build Build the walkable path, which means I want to make sure that certain tiles are able to be reached by the player by building a navigable path. And the way that I do this is pretty interesting. I start on a tile that I've designated as the player's base. And if you're wondering what the player base is for, I'll be going into the updated game design in the next video. As part of this step, I use Unity's Nav Mesh Builder to generate a walkable area based on height and if the tile has the appropriate component. Then I check each point of interest and check in with the Nav Mesh to see if it is able to be reached from 
from my base tile. If we're currently unable to reach a point of interest tile from the base tile, I use a very naive algorithm to blaze a trail straight to it. I'll demonstrate here so you can visualize how I force the walkable paths. So say, if I fill the map entirely with walls, and then I add in the points of interest, then I build my walkable path, you can see that it will replace the tiles diagonally until it's in line with the point of interest, and then it will carve a path straight to it. I want to make this more intelligent eventually, where it would be able to tell what the shortest route of replacing tiles would be in order to get a point of interest on the walkable path, but this is good enough for now. So the last step that I have right now, which is step four, is to spawn the flora around the map. And right now, that looks like grass and mushrooms. I also used Perlin noise for this as well. And using noise ensures that the grass and mushrooms are clustered together, which looks a bit more natural than random placement. And a huge time saver that I set up is having the flora fall from the sky. This is great because it looks cool, and I don't have to figure out the height that they should spawn in at. They just fall until they hit something and plant themselves right there. The fun thing about tile-based maps is that I can have some fun with animating in each individual tile as well. I'll probably change how this looks in the future, but right now I have the tiles spawning in on a delay and I can scale them out and then up, and it looks pretty neat if I do say so myself. Now overall, I'm very happy with how the level generation system is looking. I can easily extend it with different types of tiles, and already the game is much more fun to play. The stagnant screen size levels were not fun to play in my opinion, but now there's some breathing room and the ability to explore. I think this is shaping up to be a game that people will enjoy playing, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I want to save some game design talk for a future video where I'll discuss the major design pivots I'm making. But until then, I want to thank you for sticking around, hit the like button if you liked the video, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh...